Welcome, everybody, to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. We have a fantastic show coming up for you tonight. The legendary John Zaffis is with us. Coming up next. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. I'm author and researcher Mike Ricksecker. With me, as always, my co-hostess, Victoria Monday. And down in the chat room, Alina moderating the chat. We have a fantastic show coming up for you tonight. We have John Zaffis, the godfather of the paranormal, with us in the house. Of course, most people recognize him from Haunted Collector and several other shows, but... Um, John, I just want to really want to get into this with you this evening. Happy to have you on the show this evening. And um, I mean, you are you're somebody that's been involved in this field for I mean, it's a lifetime. So it's really an honor to have you on the show. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I've been around longer than dirt. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's great. Great. Great to be on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, nice absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I just really want to get into it with you here because there's, you know, we only have an hour's worth of time to, to pick this brain of yours. <laughs> and, you know, I think that something I'm always interested in is, you know, learning the differences between, you know, our historic past and the way we do things now. And I know the field has changed you know, many times over the years. So I just like I said, I want to dive into it. How are things different between then and now? And, you know, what can we learn from, you know, the way things used to be done as far as, you know, investigating the paranormal and doing this type of research? I think one of the um, uh, main factors with a lot of things I see today uh, is the fact that uh, people aren't involved like they used to be. Your connections aren't there. And what I mean by that is, you know, I, I go back to before there was the internet and anything, and how did we communicate? Telephone. You know, people laugh at me. I still have a landline. And I still use that landline and communicate with most people. You know, I miss the days when all of us, you know, would hang together um, when we used to investigate. You know, it was different. And what I mean by that is a lot of times you'd get together beforehand, you know, uh, you'd go grab a cup of coffee or, you know, just hang out. And then a lot of times afterwards you would get together and just hang out and talk about what the events were, what had happened, how things happened. And I'm still very old world with investigating. And what I mean by that is, you know, your basics are the things that are going to tell you what is happening, what isn't happening. Because I think today due to, uh, the amount of exposure, you know, uh, there's so many different TV shows, so many different things out there that people view and look at things, you know, that we go in in that half hour time, you know, we go in, we get the information, we do an investigation and, you know, we're out at the end and everything's hunky dory, everything's fine. A lot of times things still continue and, you know, it still goes on afterwards. Now for today, you know, looking at it with all the equipment, we need that. We really need that to be able to prove things out. Because there's one thing that drives me out of my mind was, it is when somebody calls me up, because I work with a lot of paranormal groups of people, and they'll go, Johnny, we didn't find any scientific proof. And the first thing out of my mouth is, what scientific proof? What are you talking about? Now, you know, Today, most people do realize that I'm, I'm an engineer by trade. I did that for 30 years. So again, when you're looking at anything from a scientific perspective, you have to have repeatability to be able to chart it out. Right. We can't do that because Casper the Ghost, 99% of the time, won't give you repeatability. <laughs> so, you know, I tell everybody, I understand what you're saying. Keep documenting. We need that. All that evidence is compiling. And sooner or later... You know, hopefully we're going to be able to prove it out scientifically. Now, you know, today we get a, we have a lot of scientists, engineers, a lot of people that I never thought in a million years would ever get involved with trying to prove out, quote unquote, the supernatural. So a lot of that is important. But again, you know, it's uh, the way I look at it. You know, it, it, I look at probably things a lot differently than most people, you know. And people say, oh, well, you know, do you know a lot of the uh, different people 
you know, that are out there on the TV shows. Kind of. I knew them all before the TV shows. So, <laughs> again, <laughs> you know, it's something that I sit back and, you know, I just laugh at. And the biggest thing I get a biggest kick out and they'll go, you know, sometimes they'll see me where I could just be talking with Jason Hawes or Grant Wilson or, you know, any anybody in particular, uh, you know, uh, Josh or anything, you know, 99 percent of the time when I'm talking to we're talking about the kids, we're talking about houses, we're talking about everything but the paranormal. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and I laugh at that and they'll go, well, what are you guys you know, talking about? What do you and I go? Nothing paranormal. I said, we talk about other things besides paranormal stuff. So, again, it it's just that, you know, I look at it at the way people perceive things and the way they they look at things. So, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I, it's just the way I, I look at stuff, I guess, maybe today. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand what you're saying because, like, at Michigan, when we saw each other, you, you basically came running up to me in the bar and you're like, I'm so jealous. All those photos you posted of Egypt. We were talking anything paranormal. We started talking oh, about Egypt. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, Egypt's one of those uh, places that's on, you know, my bucket list. So again, you know, it's uh, when, when watching it or seeing anybody, you know, I get thrilled by that. Watch it because I, when, when I'm looking at somebody on TV and Victoria, you and I were talking about that. I go uh -huh. past the TV show. Right. And, you know, I'll be watching somebody's face and the experiences or anything. I mean, who in the world wouldn't want to be with, with Josh Gates when he opens up a tomb for the very first time or yeah. opens up a crib? I mean, you know, I sit there and I'll turn and look at my wife. I go, I don't know if I want to breathe any of that shit in. But, you know, again, it, it, it's the fact of just being there at that moment and looking at the expressions on people's faces it's it, it's a dream come true for someone to be able to do things like that exactly it's the experience yeah. a lot of time i, I have yeah. many friends who oh well, I, you know, i'm going to take this photo i have an evp i'm documenting this i'm like well what about experiencing it i went to a place a few months ago i forgot to take my equipment out <laughs> i was having such That's... a good time you know and i was watching everybody and you know we we were doing all sorts of stuff and I forgot yeah. to take equipment, but, <laughs> which bugs you know, in Ireland, so I don't have But to you know what? That's okay. That's okay. That's me all the time. And it's a good thing there's people around me. I'm very happy for cell phones because people document things because I will get into, you know, the heat of the moment. What's going on? What's happening? What are people experiencing? And, you know, sometimes I don't record things. I don't do what I'm supposed to do as a quote unquote investigator. I'm probably one of the worst people with documenting things. And the worst part is I used to yell at my uncle all the time for that. I do the same thing now. You know, over the past you know, several years, it's just going, having the experiences, watching things. Then I just sit back and, you know, I take it all in that, that, I, you know, again, Probably now, I mean, there, there's enough things out there documented where people could see it or, you know, uh, live the moment of it. Uh, you know, again, I don't know. I, I just look at things from the experience perspective of it. And I probably get more, it, I wouldn't really say excitement, but I always feel better when somebody says to me, you know, Johnny, I've never experienced anything like that. And my reply back to people is now it's no longer a story. It's part of your reality because it's not something you're reading. You experienced it. So it just altered you. And people will look at me and go, you know, that's deep. And I go, yeah. <laughs> so, I liked what you said earlier about, you know, trying to prove things scientifically because just uh -huh. you know, looking at, you know, how you go about doing that in, using a scientific method and you need a control object well the control mm -hmm. object if you're trying to prove some place is haunted you would need a place that is not haunted well how do you know that you have a place that's not haunted you know so do we and given all the other things you're saying about personal experiences do we 
focus sometimes too much on the equipment? I mean, at what point is it too much trying to scientifically prove something and have our noses in those devices and just kind of like you were saying, you know, what time, at what point do we just kind of kick back and say, okay, just let me kind of feel and experience what's going on here. That's up to the individual. And um, again, I understand it. Um, I, I have several people in my organization. It takes them an hour and a half to set up. You know, midstream, the couch flew around the room. You know, they missed out yeah. on, you know, some of the stuff that, that occurred or happened. But it's very key and essential to have that documentation, to have the uh, uh, things recorded and everything. And I think a person has to have the sensibility to understand sometimes you have to have that personal experience. So you have to take both into consideration. Now, I think each and every one of us have gone to locations where, you know, everybody is always saying, oh, the, the, you know, the, the uh, supernatural is off the Richter scale. All kinds of things are happening. I've gone to some of those places and never experienced anything. But yet, again, watching and seeing some of the other people's experiences, you know, I will still take it to, you know, I take all that into consideration just because I went to a location and nothing occurred or nothing happened doesn't mean that it's, you know, doesn't have activity occurring, which takes me to the next thing. You know, a million and one people could go in out of places and have experiences. Other people could go in, nothing occurs. So that takes us right back to ground zero. Is it the location? Is it the land? Is it the individuals? Or is it, is, as I always say, a perfect storm? A lot of times it's the combination of what you're bringing in and whom is with you for things to occur and for things to happen. So I, there's so much that you have to, to still take that step back and look at as, as we move forward on our journey because it's a journey. And that journey just keeps moving forward. As long as the journey keeps moving forward, we keep those doors open. We're still learning new things. We're still experiencing th different things. There's a reason for that. That's the, at the end of the day, that's what keeps me going. And that's what keeps that, you know, that spark going within me is because there's so much that we just don't understand. And there's so much that occurs, there's so much that happens. But I don't question like I used to question. I just go, hmm. okay, there's a reason for it, you know, because I'm one of those types of people. I Nothing just happens coincidentally. Everything is planned out. I do believe that. I think each and every moment happens for a reason and for a purpose, whether it is for us to gain knowledge to just have a spiritual experience. I take I, all that. I just, I still look at that and I still take that in. And one of the craziest things is that when we do go on an investigation or anything like that, people get nervous when I get quiet and yeah. they don't. Yeah. They give people, they'll go, you're too quiet. You're too quiet. And it's just, no, I'm just trying to take in the moment. I'm trying to just, you know, experience some of it that is occurring and happening because th that's a key element for me. You know, and um, I think a lot of that is just something I'll probably never shake or, you know, uh, move past. But again, just as long as I could stay open with trying to comprehend and understand some of the equipment, because I'll be very honest with you, 99.9%, .9 I don't even know how to turn on. <laughs> let alone use it. Seriously. I mean, sometimes they'll give me equipment, uh, you know, and I'll end up screwing things up like you can't believe. So right. <laughs> nobody lets me ever touch anything. Well, do you think that um, some of it has to do with, and, and this is no insult to you or I, um, with age, like my daughter has a cell phone. Uh, she's texting me now. It's always in her hand. So she's very mm -hmm. equipment oriented. And we were discussing earlier that you and I are um, very book oriented and card catalog. Mm -hmm. And so we are more of experiencers, I guess you could say. Um, mm -hmm. And she's more of a, a, a technophobe. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, and I mean that in a loving way. But mm -hmm. um, do you think that has anything to do with it? Any, any play in it at all? 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They're all electrical devices. It's energy. I think um, with setting up all the equipment, having the cell phones and all the stuff going with the electricity and the current uh, flowing through, it generates. Now, again, with one of the biggest positives that ever came out of anything is having the camera on the cell phone. Some of the things, you know, that you see, oh, yeah. you know, uh, again, I'm a very big fan uh, of uh, watching a ghost caught on camera. Not the fact that just, you know, one of my stepchildren, Brian, is involved <laughs> with it and uh, Aaron Sagers. But uh, again, you know, um, just watching some of the footage that people, you know, do submit and you sit there and you watch it. It's like, oh, that is so freaking cool. And then on the flip side of it, I look at it and I'll go, you know, again, with the technology today and the cameras and everything on it, why is it still so grainy? So, again, you know, we have right. to keep that open mind. We got to, you know, still be able to look at that stuff. My wife hates to sit and watch the paranormal with me because I start cursing at the TV and some of the <laughs> different things that people say and do and some of the things that people submit because you can sit there and watch it and go, are you freaking kidding me? That's as fake as possible. But yeah, 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 come on. But, you know, again, that's what keeps, you know, keep us all going and, and keeps the uh, enthusiasm going. Yeah, we just had Brian on last week, actually, <laughs> and uh, always, always a good time talking with him. But, um, yeah, you know, with the, the technology has certainly changed things over the years. Um, but, you know, kind of going back a little bit, because uh, you have been doing this a while, and of course, um, you know, Ed and Lorraine, the aunt and uncle, um, yeah. you know, what were the biggest lessons that you learned from them that you're still oh. using today? Everything. <laughs> yeah. Mike, that, you know, it, and I talk about this quite openly because it, it's very difficult for me when people say to me, well, what was it like working with Ed and Lorraine Warren? I got, I don't know. It was my aunt and uncle and they chased freaking ghosts. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> when growing up and listening to the ghost stories and things, you know, me and I had four other boy cousins. All of us grew up. We're all close in age and everything. And when, you know, my aunt and uncle would come over to visit my grandmother, which was Ed's mom. And he would just start telling us ghost stories and we'd be like, oh, 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 oh yo. and we'd get all <laughs> fired up and everything over it. And I think one of, one of the key things was just being able to hang out with them because they lived 20 minutes north of us uh, okay. uh, at any given point where any of us lived. And a lot of times when my mom would make different dishes or anything, take this up for my brother, take this up for my brother. So I was always <laughs> running food up there, you know, and I would end up going places with them. You know, they began ready to go out or do something and I would jump in the car with them and I would go. And, you know, my mom used to get upset, especially when I was younger, because sometimes I wouldn't come back to the following day. And, you know, back then we didn't have the cell phones. You couldn't text and say, no, you know, <coughs> excuse me. But that was the coolest experiences uh, on doing a lot of the things. Now, I did not necessarily believe in a lot of things till I was, you know, 16 years old. And that's when I had the sighting of my grandfather at the foot of the bed and, you know, was shaking his head back and forth. My grandfather passed away when I was four. So I remember a couple of things, but not much. And then a few days later, my grandmother passed away and I went downstairs to start telling my mom the story and everything. And, you know, she just looked at me and my mother was petrified of the paranormal. Now you have to try and figure this out. My mom and Ed were twins, but my mother was petrified because they grew up in a haunted house and she would never talk about the paranormal. I'd ask her, go ask my brother, go ask my brother. She would never talk about paranormal stuff. Never. And, um, again, a as time went on, I got more exposed to things. And when I went up and told my uncle about this experience, he literally turned and looked at me. I have to clean it up because both of us dropped the up bomb left and right. Like you can't <laughs> believe, but anyways, he goes, you didn't believe in all this. I go, well, no, I just, you know, again, I knew things existed, things that I've had experiences and stuff, but not to that degree. But that opened up the door where I really started researching because people would always talk about deceased loved ones coming back to help them to cross over. 
at that point, it became part of my reality. So therefore, I looked at it differently. And that's what really got me going and really, you know, over the, you, you know, several years, just, you know, getting involved and be bopping around with them as I called it. And, but what was always the best, I think, thing that I could never understand, my uncle was more cryptic than I am. You know, because people tell me all the time, I'm a very cryptic person, you know, and it's just, I I don't know, it's just the way it is. But I would always ask him things and he would never answer things, but he would always throw different things out. But I didn't realize back then it was a learning process. He wanted me to learn that and understand it on my own. And I apply a lot of that, you know, to uh, my everyday, well, not everyday stuff, but dealing with uh, the paranormal because after when he went down in 2001, I would go, well, well, well you know, what am I going to do? You know, because I would always call him up and, uh, you know, something was going on or I was working on stuff or anything like that. And then I go, wait a minute, I remember this case or I remember this scenario, you know, and I can apply different things. So therefore that to this day was where now I look back at it and I go, how many people ever had an education like that? Not many, right? Not many. Yeah, that's yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Sorry. No, no go uh, ahead, Victoria. No, I agree with you. I think it's more important to teach someone how to think and how to figure this out. I mean, I do that with my daughter. I've done that with people I've trained. We call it "learn while you burn." Um, then just <laughs> then just give them the answer, you know, because how are they going to figure anything out when, like you said, you're alone or mm -hmm. you're in a situation where you need to figure something out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that, that that that's a very important uh, uh, thing that we're we've lost that it's gone today, and it, I don't know if we're ever going to see that come back because we live in such a technical world today. You know, again, um, I just always sit back and you know my, my my major friendships and things have always been established with one-on-one -on -one communication with people and you know i i you know that today is not there it's it's just it's something that that that's missing you know uh within our society per se no matter what not just you know paranormal it's gone it, and it's a hard yeah. thing now to get back yeah. yeah, it's very different these days because we rely so much on text. You have people that get upset these days for receiving a phone call. They're just, you know, why didn't you just text me? But you lose so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. You know, again, you know, that's me. I'll get, you know, I'll, uh, people will go back and forth with me, and I'm notorious for this. I'll send them back a message and go, pick up the freaking phone. <laughs> call me. I don't, I, I'm not going to sit here all night typing back and forth. No. So, but, you know, again, it, it, it's the world we live in and it, it's, it's a difficult thing to, you know, filter through and go through. I think one of the best things that ever came uh, to a realization over the past couple of years with us all being in lockdown is, you know, I tripled my walking. I tripled mm -hmm. getting back out there. And I never realized how much I missed that going, walking along the water, going through the woods, because I used to do that as a kid, going hiking and everything like that. Sure. But that disappeared because the pace of our lives was nonstop. We didn't know what it was to, you know, take take that step down until we were forced to. And that just, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, I think a lot of us looked at it from that perspective to use that to our advantage instead of our disadvantage. I know I did, you know, and the other good part about it was that it made me start to remember things that I was forgetting. So many different things, you know, I, I would just come back and I would sit and tell my wife, you know, this or that or this or that. And she'll go, you know, in 40 years, I've never heard you talk about some of this stuff. And I go, oh, well, I just happened to remember it, you know, and <laughs> just start talking about it. So, yeah. Uh, uh, while Mike was rebooting his computer before we started, um, John and I had a really good conversation. He even had me blushing. And um, we were just <laughs> laughing and jo joking and talking. And I think bringing that wall down and having like one on one communications again, 
that's only going to help people in the paranormal field because now it's not like, is there anybody in the room? You know, now you can just start having conversations. And I have found that when I do things like that, maybe I say something really stupid and the meters will light up and they'll do something, you know, and it's, it's not the textbook. Um, but they, I think it's only, that's only going to benefit us all. And by the way, I love all your moon pictures. I see your moon pictures all the time when you're out walking. Oh yeah. Oh, the photographs. Yeah. 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 Oh, you know what? I love that because I started such a trend with everybody. Yeah. And you know, people would just say, now you got me doing it. Now you got me doing it. And it's good. It, it makes you feel good. And, you know, just to be able to walk out and, you know, uh, have that it, it, cause it's so nice and bright. And, you know, again, um, I believe in a lot of the old traditions and a lot of the different things out there, you know, uh, when it comes into different things. And uh, again, it's just something, you know, that, um, I love because a lot of times when when it is the full moon, I'm fortunate that I live near the water like that. And I'll just sit there on the piers and just reflect and just sit there, you know, and uh, it feels good. Mm -hmm. But it seemed to have started a trend that disappeared and it, it seems to have come pretty back pretty strong with a lot of people posting the full moon and them going out and walking, you know, under it and feeling mm -hmm. the experience of it. It's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, Thank some you. of those are yeah. some amazing photographs for sure. Um, we do have some questions coming in from the chat room, so I do want to get to a couple of these. So first one here is from Sarah Youssef. Do you believe that paranormal is a result of an overlaying of different type of energetic realities? It can be. Um, we have to remember there's an imprint. I definitely believe in that. Um, I believe by having physical people in a environment that it takes a lot of this to come together for experiences to take place and for things to occur and happening. So to say that uh, something can be overlaid with different layers. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. And this one's from Emma. Let me hit the button here. Uh, Emma asked, do you think turning airplane mode on your phone matters during an investigation? No, I, uh, I've watched that. I, you know, I hear people talking about it. Um, do I really feel that, you know, it triggers the, uh, oh, what's the meter with the lights guys? Come on. The EMF. Yeah. yeah. You know, do I, d does it trigger it? Yes. We know that we've all proven it and it all, you know, uh, it does occur a lot of times. But do I believe turning it in the airplane mode is stopping the possibility of the energy reflecting back and forth? No, I think that's going to occur regardless of whether you shut your, your phone completely off or you shut everything off. I still think things are going to happen. Now, as crazy as this may sound, I feel that you know, it could be pulling the energy from the batteries, from the cell phones, from the cameras, from all the different equipment that's there. So there's a lot of variables to take into play when uh, talking about that. Oh, yeah, I've definitely seen cases where yeah. there's some insane battery drain and, uh, you know, oh, yeah, you know, brand new batteries and all of a sudden, you know, it's dead. Everything. Yeah. 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 So let me grab one more here um, uh, from Robert Hanna. Did the haunting Connecticut experience scare John? I remember that documentary. Yes. Um, again, um, there, there were several different occurrences that took place, but what was one of the most uh, profound things was, you know, it came down the stairs. It was transparent. It was huge. It had a terrible odor to it. Everybody was sleeping and I was screaming for everybody. And it said, and it did it as it came down, it said, do you know what they did to us? Do you know what they did to us? Well, I was like, you could not believe, I actually wish they had filmed what actually happened because at that point I was yelling and hollering. I had fell over the coffee table. I had tripped over a, a chair because the only thing I was interested in was grabbing my keys to get the hell out of that house. That And again, there were three days that went by. I wouldn't talk to anybody. I wouldn't take telephone calls from anyone. So it was earth shattering. I found out 
several years later, they were interviewing my wife for something I was doing. I don't remember what it was. And she recounts how she remembered those for three nights, I would shake as I was sleeping. And, you know, again, um, I have never, I haven't been back in that house since um, everything, you know, was done. The exorcism was performed. It was successful. They moved out. But I can remember it as clear as day, what transpired, what happened in, in the moment of it. And that changed the reality from the simple fact that, you know, there are things that do exist. There are things that happen and it alters you once you experience things like that. And that's what really made me take a step uh, looking at, you know, a lot of things from another perspective. Once you have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with something uh, of that level and that magnitude, you don't ever forget any of the details. You don't forget anything that happened, no matter what transpires or what happens. So was I scared? Yes. I, I admit it. When the day comes that nothing scares me anymore, it's time for me to get out of this work because there's too much out there we don't know about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly uh, plenty <laughs> unanswered at this point. Uh, on the flip side, this is actually a great question from uh, Nicole, who uh, you may remember she was with me in uh, Las Vegas. You, you met us together there uh, yep. at Shockfest a couple of years ago. So she asks, what warm and fun experience has John had at a haunted location? One of them, I, 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 I don't talk often about this. My uncle had sent me down into his museum to go retrieve something that was on his desk in his office. And I went down with one of the other researchers, Lou Gentili. He has now since passed also. But um, we were standing there and we were just in the middle of the, uh, the museum, just standing there. My uncle came out the back door from his kitchen, came down and went into the back and the door was open on the museum and he had a foghorn. Blew the freaking foghorn off. Lorraine was looking in the window. I jump out of my skin. I jump up in the air. We're knocking stuff over. And I'm screaming and yelling and hollering. Poor Lou Gentili. I knocked him over. He was on the floor. So anyways, all this is going on, right? Then Ed and Lorraine come in. And we're standing there. My uncle is hysterical laughing. He's crying at this point in time. And Lorraine was just standing there. And she's looking around. And she goes, I hope nothing got broken, you know, <laughs> like that. Oh, wow. But I think to this day, that was one thing that scared me. Because my uncle said, he goes, he literally jumped up in the air when I did that. I go, you think? So I think that, you know, again, probably, you know, the, the comedy things or the funny things I look back at now are unbelievable. And one other thing I too remember, too, we're working on a wicked case. We had a woman that was working on it. And she insisted that the quote unquote demon in the house scared her out. She ran down the street, ran into a cemetery and climbed up on a tombstone. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I remember big and I walked up, got in front of her and we couldn't get her to stop screaming. I looked up at her and I said to her, I said, well, if there were any demons or ghosts around us, I think you just scared them away by doing that. <laughs> so, you know, it, the funny things like that, I mean, again, it, it's it's unbelievable that w when you look back at it and yeah, you recount a lot of the, the comical things that occur and happen. Yeah, that's fantastic because I think a lot of times, um, like a lot of people focus too much on, you know, the, the spooky, scary stuff and all that and kind of forget, you know, we have a lot of fun with each other. There are good and humorous times. And yes. uh, those are you know, yeah. fond memories to look back at. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, too, another thing that um, uh, I tell people, especially when I'm lecturing or anything like that, today people are 24-7 paranormal. And that's not a healthy thing at all. It's yeah. not. We have families. We have kids. We have grandkids. We should have other interests besides the paranormal. Um, just like a person that works, like a doctor, a nurse, a fireman, you have to shut that off in your life and do other things, not live 24, you know, 24 seven paranormal. I, you know, 
people laugh at me about that. And, you know, I walk out of my office, walk, you know, across the deck and go back into the house. The paranormal got left out in my office in the barn. I go back in the house. I'm interested in other things. I want to know what's going on. And, you know, that's, it, to me, it's healthy to shut that part down and walk away from it and have another you know, whole life, you know, shoot, I still, yeah, I, I have several buddies I hang around with. And to this day, they still tease me about the ghost because it's got, they got nothing to do with the paranormal, nothing. <laughs> so again, it's just, it, it's just a very good, healthy thing. I think that, you know, I wish people would look at and, you know, uh, take that step back and stop living your whole life within the paranormal arena and do some of the other things, I don't know, build a ship or something, or, you know, go do some <laughs> gardening or something that is, you know, that, that is besides paranormal. I don't know. if that, Victoria, you do your yeah. rent fairs. Oh, geez. I'm so sore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I walked so much this weekend. Yeah. This was the closing weekend. I'm an ambassador for the Texas Renaissance festival. So ah, it man, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> was a lot of walking this weekend, but, um, I did want to ask you one question. Um, we were chatting earlier and I told you, you know, I worked in television, so I don't really come home and watch TV. Like you said, it's a work-life balance. You know, I, I want to, well, I don't mm -hmm. really want to clean, but you know, I do that sometimes. <laughs> um, but the Haunted Collector was one of my favorite shows and I, I binged watched it. Um, Thank you. I, I don't know how watching. many times. So I want to pitch you a new show idea in case you want to do oh, it. Oh, you know? here it comes. No, Mike, no. Mike, what are we doing? <laughs> Mike, where I, are we going? I told Brian last week. I told Brian, you she would do this. Brian just kind of rolled his eyes. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I think you should do the haunted antique row show, you know, because everything's traveling now. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> do you know that was our original pitch? No. Was it real? <laughs> uh, okay. I don't talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it. Okay. Uh, um, what's what's uh, Mike uh, and uh, Frank, um, What's the show? Mike and Frank, they go to the different places and pick the P American Pickers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. American yeah. Pickers. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Mike had pitched me originally to do a show like that before Haunt the Collector actually got picked up. And they pitched it to several different networks and everything. They go, that'll never fly. So, again, you know, that's why I started laughing as soon as you just said that. <laughs> that was the first thing that just came. I remember the pitch. I remember it going back and forth. And it, it, it didn't fly at that point in time. I don't, I don't know, again, you know, uh, looking down the road, um, Victoria and I were talking earlier, you know, today, you know, I hear from a lot of the guys from the networks and shows and everything that go, John, Haunted Collector is more popular now than when you were on the air. And I go, I know, I know you guys keep telling me all the numbers and everything. You know, I, I never say no. You know, that, that's one thing I do. I never say no. Uh, will maybe something happen in the future? You never know. Uh, you don't know. And, you know, again, it, if I did, it would be one of the most unique type situations probably that, um, you know, I would look forward to doing. And, Victoria, as you can say, I'm not saying because, no, because somebody will be watching this and then they'll pitch it tomorrow morning and it'll get sold. <laughs> Remember me. Yeah, because I was telling you about my books. When I first got an ovulus, I was like, oh, I got an ovulus. You know, mm -hmm. I was running around. I was just being all crazy and I was so excited because, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was a crap ton of money and I paid for one because that's what you're supposed to have. Yeah. Um, and as I walk past my books, it's just blah, 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 saying all this random stuff. And I'm like, well, this doesn't work. And I'd go in my bedroom and it would stop. Huh? I'd go past the books and there it would go again. And it finally, it dawned on me, those are all used books. Or, well, most <laughs> of them are. Um, and a lot of them were, you know, estate sales and stuff. And there's probably, you know, as much as I love my books, why wouldn't someone love their books when they were alive? So huh? I forgot where I was going with this, but <laughs> you could do like an <laughs> escape room, you know, can you find the haunted object in 20 minutes or something? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I, I was just putting up on the screen several uh, comments in the chat that they would love a show like that. Yes. See? So, <laughs> so everything is yeah. streaming. You can just do it real quick. Yeah, yeah it's all streaming now. So, and, and, and Johnny, and I know you do have you know some some reservations about you know 
getting back into television, although you leave the door open. Um, if not a haunted collector, what would be a type of show that would interest you? It would be, there's something in my mind. And again, I don't, um, it would be unique, Mike. It'd be very unique. Uh, there's a few things that recently uh, talked about to uh, with a couple of friends of mine, which they almost fell off the chairs. They're in the industry. And they went, I never thought I'd ever hear you say this. And you know, we were just talking in general. And again, the, like I said, there's... Um, a few things, but one of my friends has said something to me. I've been friends with him. He's, he's in the production field, and he goes, "You are the only one that would be able to pull that off." And I go, "I know." I said, "I know." He goes, "You're." He goes, "You're the only one that would even remotely be able to do that." I said, "Yeah," but the whole point of it is, was that I don't want to start doing something, and then all of a sudden, no, 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 we got to do it this way. No, 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 we got to do it that right. way. That's where I get frustrated, Mike. You know, that's where, you know, it's like, let things happen. You know, they, uh, there's the most spontaneous things make the best TV. Oh, and there cool. were so many, so many things that when we were out on the road uh, doing with uh, Haunted Collector, and there was a lot of the production team that did not believe in the paranormal, when they walked away from that, they came, they walked away with a totally different comprehension and i've had several of them say to me just watching you how do you figure things out how do you know things i said because i know what my job is i right. said first i'm a paranormal investigator that's what it's all about and it really got victoria you'll appreciate this more than anybody <laughs> it got but when we were in third season and brian will even tell you this when they would say no you have to do this or no you have to do that i'd go and the, the head honcho would go, let him do what he wants, because that's the only way you're going to get anything. So, again, we would walk away with some of the best experiences that people would have, you know, and that's what I would enjoy. And that's what I would like, you know, again. And, you know, today, you know, uh, several of them, you know, had moved on to do other paranormal shows and things. Mm -hmm. And they'll call me up just off the, out of the Johnny. And I'll go, what do you need help with now? And they'll be working on something or, you know, and they'll be going back and forth and boom. You know, I'll say, okay, like this, like this, like that. And I'll go, okay. I, you know, and then I'll rattle off what they're doing, who they're working with. And they go, how the freak do you know everything? And I said, just uh, it's just the nature of it with me. I just you know a lot of times could pick up on and figure things out quickly when somebody's trying to you know pull something together. But those are the type of people I respect more than anything because they ask and they try yeah. to learn you know uh, what it is that they're, they're they're producing or what they're getting involved with and what they're trying to create. Right, because some of this you can't script. Well, none of this you should script. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> It just happens. It's it's like the art of storytelling is almost gone. And there's a few of us. I come from a long line of storytellers. And man, my daughter is really good. She's <laughs> very verbose. I don't know where she gets that from. But, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that needs to come back, I think. The art of storytelling. It's gone. It's gone. Let's bring it back. <laughs> yeah. Mike, Mike, you're a storyteller. I'm a storyteller. I, I, I do what I can. He's but, fantastic um, when he yeah. speaks. He's very good. You know, the, the other thing, too, is that, that it's hard when we're out doing conventions or anything because you, a lot of time, you, know, you have to stay at your table. You're not going to sell your books, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, you know, every once in a while, I'll just, you know, hopefully I get that time where, you know, I get to go listen to different people. And I always try to stay in the back because I don't like to get anybody, you know, nervous or anything. And, I love going in and, you know, I got him good. And I said to him, you know, because I got excited. I went, walked right up to him. I said, I watched you. You got the passion. You got, you got it. You know, and again, that's what, uh, it, it, it's important when people are lecturing or speaking and doing things that you, you see that passion, you see what, what it's about, you know, and, and the journey. 
that's an important element. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, and that and that's a huge compliment coming from you, Johnny. I absolutely appreciate that. Uh, sincerely, you got it, buddy. sincerely. You got it, buddy. Uh, I do have it. some more questions coming in from the chat. That's um, fine. Yeah. <laughs> two hours? Are we going two hours? No, we're not going two hours. Okay. <laughs> you can go if you want. I'm fine. I'm having a blast. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Glad you're enjoying your show. Uh, so this is from uh, Betty Lange, Betty's uh, grand old folks. Does John feel that the field has advanced lately or is going backwards? Um, I think it's a, con a, a, a confusing time. I think there's a lot of elements that are transpiring. Uh, do I think it's going backwards? No, not really, because I think a lot of the old elements are missing now. Um, I think this whole thing with COVID has changed everything. Um, it, I, we're, we're going to be going back in as things open up and we're able to move forward. You know, uh, we're going to be looking at different things because I think people being in the lockdown finally experience things they had a chance to look at things a little bit differently so i'm hopeful that you know like victoria says hopefully we're going to see some of the old elements come back in with the new elements incorporated in it you know it's hard for me because most people you know one thing when people ask me well, what's your you know what is your favorite uh paranormal show to watch i really don't have a favorite one and it's very difficult for me to, to to say something like that. I know everybody, you know, and, and it's very, it's a hard thing for me to, you know, uh, criticize or say something because of, you know, what they're doing on their show or how they're handling their show. It's just, you know, I, uh, again, I have to look at things differently, you know, uh, from that, you know, uh, perspective when talking about anybody. I mean, you know, again. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times too, and it's something that, you know, again, I just, um, look at a little bit differently when you're talking to a lot of these individuals are a lot differently off camera than they are on camera. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm just going to say this, Zach Bagans is nothing like he is on camera. You know, I've had several conversations with him over the years and, you know, he's totally, uh, different than what you're going to see on camera. But, you know, uh, again, you know, Jason, Grant, Amy, Adam, Chippy, you know, we, we all go back many, many years. And again, I know all these people. So Katrina. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and I know you throw Zach out out there because he, he seems to be like a lightning rod figure. But, you know, I've seen I've seen him work. Uh, he interviewed me for you know one of the episodes and he is very diligent about, you know, he, what he does. This shot this angle. And it's like. He is focused, so yeah, definitely give yeah. him credit for that. Uh, but let me ask you this: mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the uh, the shows over the year have done a, a fantastic job of you know opening up this world to people and letting people you know mm -hmm. come, be able to come forward and feel comfortable with saying, "Hey, I've had these experiences. I'm seeing these you know shows. I'm seeing these other people come forward, you know, recounting their experiences. Yeah. I've had these experiences too. So I think that is absolutely fantastic. But then. Yeah. Um, on the flip side of that, you also have this whole, um, just say it like it is Mike. Yeah, no, I'm trying to find the right words <laughs> where everything's demon, demon, demon. It's like, you know, I'm not trying to call out anybody specific or any network specific, but it seems like that's where, you know, the networks want to go, the scarier, the better, that sort of thing. So how do we, how do we juggle that? One of the hardest things in the world is dealing with that. Now, again, I always laugh when people say to me, I didn't even know you were a demonologist. I said, yeah, because I don't run around screaming demon all the time. Right. That It's not what it's about to me. But the, what the biggest thing is, if we all look at the big picture, this is, I, I am going to quote my uncle again. My uncle used to say all the time, you could tell a, a hundred good beautiful ghost stories and people won't remember them. You say demon and people will remember it. And he's right. He's a hundred percent right. You talk about negative, you talk about possession, you talk about people hurtling in the air. People remember all that. And, you know, 
it, it, it's the foundation of it is the simple fact we'd rather be scared we'd rather you know jump out of our skin than hear about Aunt Tilly walking across the room and giving somebody a hug and walking away people just they don't pay attention to the simple fact of the fact of uh, with human spirit and dealing with energy and interacting with us is th th more profound than just dealing with something on a negative level or you know dealing with the uh, the devils the demons the jinns you know uh, deities these are all things I've dealt with they are all things that you know uh, I'm acquainted with it's just that when it comes into the demonology end of this work I don't know. I don't know if I just look at it differently than most people. I just, you know, I handle it, you know, a lot differently. I'd be very honest with you. I've gotten offered demonology shows up the wazoo from every network you could possibly imagine. And I won't do it. I just, I just do not want to go down that road where everything is just going to be focused on that because there's so much more to it. There's, a, the, there's just all whole other world to it that's what, again too people laugh and you know they'll say to me do you believe in uh, cryptozoology absolutely i can't rule nothing out yeah you know, i want somebody to find a freaking bigfoot skeleton yes i want that do i want somebody to find the loch ness monster yes i sat one night overnight looking for locky and couldn't find her my uncle came by woke us up in the morning hit me he goes did you see it and i go no and he busted out laughing but anyhow <laughs> you know it, it, it's I it's there there's so much we don't know there's so much we don't understand I don't rule anything out I can't I cannot rule anything out yeah, yeah. when it when it comes to the the demon and, and the scares and, and and all that does that go back to you know sitting around the campfire and having somebody tell a great story to give us a little spook and a jump scare does it go back to that you mean as as far as what, Mike? As far as as far as when we were talking about, you know, okay, you're being approached about demonology shows. People want the demon mm -hmm. aspect because it's you know it's scary, it's frightening, that sort of thing. Like you were saying, your your uncle said, you know, tell tell something scary that'll be remembered. If it's not, people aren't going to remember it. So that's what I'm kind of you know drawing a correlation with. Does that go back to when you know we're all sitting around the campfire and we want a spooky story? That's part of it. Um, again, uh, here, here, a good example I use when it comes into exorcism or it comes into possession, what is the main thing that comes into our mind? The exorcist. The right. first thing that pops into each and every one of our minds. Based off of a true story, yes. But again, when we look at all of this dating back as far back as it goes in time, people will remember those stories of possession. People will remember there was demons. They'll remember all of this as clear cut. For the simple fact, when you look at it, people are intrigued by it. Does it occur? Does it happen? And, you know, I always take the step back because, you know, I'm Roman Catholic, a practicing Roman Catholic, but I'm the farthest thing from, you know, bringing that out. That That's my... You know, my thing. I'm not a, a one to tell anybody how to live or anything. And again, too, I'd probably, you know, again, I got more pagan and, and witch friends than I do anything else, you know. But <laughs> it, it doesn't matter to me. That, that stuff doesn't matter to me. What I think I'm getting at is that, Mike, I think it goes back to the beginning of times. People just like to get scared. Exactly. People, yeah, and and that is the, the main element when we look at anything from uh, the, the standpoint. Now, here's a good example. When we go to see scary movies, we go to see the, you know, the paranormal movies, and people will freak out. Well, that's nothing like what the case was about. And it states in there, you know, uh, based off of a true story or some of the facts are from a true story. Yeah, because if you did a whole two-hour movie on a case, quote-unquote, It'd be boring as hell. And what are we all going to do today? The first thing we're going to do, don't waste your money going to see that movie. It's boring. Okay. If somebody isn't flying up in a chair, somebody's not getting thrown across the room, the building's not getting destroyed, 
We're not going to get scared. I go to paranormal movies to get scared. I love it. I love it when my popcorn flies up and I get scared. And so that's why I go to them. So again, when the elements are there and everything, you know, again, the funniest running joke with me is, you know, I used to uh, take two of my kids with me and I'd go to the matinee because I get the cheap you know, discount. But anyways, you know, and my daughter would always say to me, keep your mouth shut. He go, you start mother effing up at the screen and yelling at it and everything else. Right. And she goes, daddy, half of these people in here know who you are. And I go, eh, 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 eh. because, you know, again, but you have to take all that into consideration you know, because then people would walk up to me afterwards. What do you think of it? What do you think of it? I go, scared the crap out of me. I love it. They go, but Johnny, it wasn't about the case. I go, who cares? It's a scary movie. <laughs> that's what we went it's to go see. Yeah. It's entertaining. Okay. And that's the way I look at it. And again, too, you know, it, it I get, I, it, that's just the way I look at a lot of it. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. But. The entertainment value is what movies are about, and that's what sells movies. Yeah, you're right. It's actually part of our um, our makeup because you know it's the fight or flight. Um, mm -hmm. While people look at Rex, you know, or you say, "Oh, so and so died." Well, how did he die? It doesn't matter how he died. He died. You know, we don't need the gory details, and it's it's the same thing in the paranormal. If you either accept it, it's real, it happens. We don't always need the scary stuff, but um, death is part of life. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. yeah. it is. It, uh, it's not a uh, you know a comfortable thing, yeah. but you know when it, when it's something that I look at, and it, it took me several years to come to terms with that. When you know, um, well, the, you guys are aware of this. We just recently lost, you know, uh, two very yeah. prominent uh, people that. Um, we're a big part of all of our lives. I mean, and again, and um, I've learned to take it with the fact of celebrating what they have accomplished, what they did, what they lived for, what they stood for. And to me, that was a major, major factor with a lot of the people I had 30 and 40 years friendships with. And, you know, I recently had posted something and oh my gosh, the, the responses I got privately and it was that, you know, what becomes of an old friend? How do you establish a friendship? You nurture them, you build them, they come together. And I think that's what I was talking about earlier. We lost that today. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not something that's there. Like, you know, when I could go a year or two years without talking to certain people and picking the phone up. And it's just like, we talked yesterday, yep. you know, that, that to me is an established, you know, friendship. I don't have to talk to somebody every day or once a week. We can go a long period of time without speaking, but that, that foundation was established and it was there. Right. It's something you nurture. Yeah. Yeah, and I did. I, I had found this little posting thing, and I had thrown it up. I can't remember it now offhand. But anyhow, you know, as I had grown, learned to move on with that, I don't sit back now. Don't get me wrong. I cry. I cry. Oh, sure. You know, when I lose friends, I just do because it's hard. It's hard because you know it makes you take that step back and look. You know. At different things but anyhow you know it's what they accomplished what they did and you know how they moved forward and one person that was able to help me with that process to be able to do that was rosemary ellen guiley oh you know i rosemary, you know yeah. uh rosemary and i were like brother and sister and that that you know again but i had that opportunity to sit and speak to her you know several days before uh, she had left this plane and it was our conversation that we had that helped me to understand some of it. And she had looked at me and I don't talk about this often, but it's important too, because it helps people. And she goes, Johnny. And I go, well, Ro, she says, I got so much more to do yet. I said, I know you do. I said, I know. And um, we were sitting there and we were talking, going back and forth. And her husband, Joe, 
was in the background and he kept walking back and forth because Rosemary and I have one of those relationships where we could yell back and forth and swear at each other. It, that, that was our, our mm -hmm. foundation. And I go, but what you've already accomplished, what you've already done, what you've already established, it, it's there. It'll always be there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's left she, such a legacy. And yeah. But then she just looked at me and she went, yeah, I know. And I go, <laughs> what? Ro. <laughs> but anyhow, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to use it as a foundation that I walked away with something that was able to help me move forward past that. And that conversation was one of them because I don't ever recall sitting down, having a kumbaya moment with somebody that was getting ready to pass away. I really don't, but we did. Yeah. And I call it my kumbaya moment, but anyhow, you know, that's why I think I look at more now the celebration of it, what they did, what they accomplished, what some of the things that the legacy, so many of these people left behind. It's phenomenal. That's how I try to judge it now. Or look at it, I should say, not judge it. Yeah. I saw um, yeah, Pete's, Pete's wife's posting. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go Thursday because it's literally right around the corner from me. So, And she said it's a celebration of his life. So I think that's just going to be amazing, you know. That's what Pete would want it, though. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, that's good that you'll get a chance to go. Yeah, absolutely. Give her a big hug for me. Okay. <laughs> so unfortunately, we're Sorry. at the end of our show. <laughs> And on that note, I'm sorry. It, yeah, it's uh, we're at our hour mark. So, uh, Johnny, I really do appreciate you joining us on the show. Um, what do you have coming up next? I know you know holidays are kicking up and and everything, but uh, anything coming up here? Events? Um, well, the, the only th yeah, the only thing I have left uh, that I'm doing right at this point in time, I'll be out in uh, Las Vegas for the paranormal unity i'm terrible at remembering names of things <laughs> hey how i guess they're you know it's uh looks like it's going to be a pretty big one with uh quite a few people there from uh what i've seen and um that'll be uh closing out the year uh, as far as uh doing anything um again went back to investigating working on a few cases here and there right now and uh just moving forward and uh Trying to stay safe, trying to stay healthy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I do hope to see you out on the road somewhere along the line next year. Be you will, my uh, friend. You, you will. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, John Zaffis, everybody. He'll go ahead and put the uh, the banner back up with his website, johnzaffis.com, but you all know where to find him. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much again for joining us tonight. This has been a real treat. It was great. And, uh, Thanks for having me. Having you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, my friend. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. John Zaffis, everybody. Uh, he is he is such a treat to talk to. He, is. he really He's, is. Yeah. He had me laughing so, so hard while you were rebooting. <laughs> I know. I came back from <laughs> from rebooting. It took a while, too. The computer did not want to cooperate. And finally get back in there. You guys are like each busting a gut. So. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm he's... blushing. I was so bad. <laughs> Yeah, he, he is so fun to talk to, um, you know, and just, yeah. And, and like he said, you know, you know, we get together at some of these conventions and we're not even talking about the paranormal. We're just laughing, having a good time talking about whatever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, um, do want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. We're going to go ahead and uh, get into the shout outs. Let you know real quick next week. Uh, we have Richard Estep on tap. So we have, we have two shows left for the rest of the year. Richard S. Step next week. And then following that, Darcy, we're talking about um, his new Men in Black documentary. And then that's it. We're done for the year. Okay. It's gone by <laughs> quick. It has gone by quick. Yes and no. Some yes and no. <laughs> some things have just... <laughs> 2020 has been the longest week. Oh, wait. This is 2021. It's it? 2021. <laughs> about to be 2022. Oh, you see, you know what I mean. It's been a very long week this last two years. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, I do want to thank Alina down in the uh, our chat moderator for moderating the chat as always, tossing me a bunch of those questions. Sorry, we weren't able to get to all of them. Um, so let's get to the uh, participants tab here. Um. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna. I. I will try to pronounce this. New viewer, 
this evening. Uh, yeah. Azari- Azariana. That's a pretty Trundle. Name. Yeah, that is very pretty. That's so pretty. thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, there's Aaron Bush. Thank you for joining us as well, Aaron. Uh, Eva Geller, thanks for joining us once again. Greg Cause is in the house. Great to see you, Greg. Helen Espinoza, thanks. thank you for joining us once again. As well as Lenora Martinez, thank you as well. Melissa Blackman, thank you for joining us tonight. And there's Robert Hanna. And Stacy Comiskey, thanks for joining us tonight, as well as Tammy Heitzman. Uh, there's TFT Tarot for today and the Haglin, as well as Honor Road Media's Fairy Queen, Diane Hilbert. Um, and that was all from the participants tab, even though we had a ton of people in the chat this evening. So thank you, YouTube, for not being all inclusive. Uh, there's Thayer. And so I'm just going to go through the, the, chat, uh, the chat box now. Uh, Thayer's in the house. Great to see you, Thayer. Um, there is, um, well, Nicole was in earlier this evening, Daddy Neckos. Uh, let's see. Uh, we had, and we had all kinds of questions tonight. So thank you for the questions as well. Uh, there was, uh, Betty Lange was here. Uh, Emma, thanks for joining us tonight. Sarah Youssef, thank you for your questions as well. Uh, let's see. We also had, had a lot of, you know who questions. I saw earlier? Who did you see earlier? Oh, Zippy, Zippy Davis. Yes. <laughs> Zippy Davis was in. I haven't seen Zippy in a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Andrew Cox, Andrew and his trucking gnomes is here. Um, let's see. Sarah Porfidio, thanks for joining us tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll back down because it's just, that's a lot to try to keep up with. Um, so if, Missed you. Sorry. We do try to get to as many pu- people as we can with the shout outs. Uh, connecting, u- connecting the universe tomorrow night, Wednesday. We also only have two classes uh, left for the rest of the year. So um, let me toss that information up. Connecting the universe portal dot com uh, every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Uh, last week, we did interdimensional beings this week. The next two weeks, because we don't have two left, I'm going to take kind of um, the couple big popular topics that we had this year and just kind of focus a little bit more, give a little bit more information on those. So we're doing more Egypt stuff and uh, people really liked that. (laughs) What's that? Hollow Earth? No. (laughs) (laughs) I like the symbolism and all that kind of stuff in Egypt. that, That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was fascinating. And quick shout out here for uh, for Johnny Enoch, since he was out there in Egypt with me, and we covered a lot of that uh, symbolism there. His uh, show, Mystery Teachings on Gaia, last night did a whole episode on ancient symbolism. It was fantastic. So um, yeah, check that out if, if uh, you're on Gaia at all. So. Um, yeah, well, we can do more ancient symbolism because that always is kind of all inclusive with the Egypt stuff. So oh, yeah. um, tomorrow night, connect to universeportal.com. Come join us. So, yeah, Victoria <laughs> will be there. I'll be there. Yes, I will. I have nothing to do. No, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking, you know, there's lost a lot of friends the last couple of weeks. And, you know, it's... it has been really tough. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. it, it's yeah. been a big year for losing people. Um, yeah. N- Nicole just lost somebody. Oh, I don't even think it was two weeks ago. Um, yeah, uh, some others here from the paranormal community. Mm-hmm. Uh, we lost. Um, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, friends and no family more. this year. It's just, a, it's been a big mess. No more. I'm so, done. Um, no more death. There's Adam Tillery. Okay. <laughs> lurking, watching okay. the Curse of Oak Island. Is that what he's symbolizing? That's what all the symptoms are. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's got the two eyes. That's him lurking. And he's got the pickaxe, the pirate uh, the pirate flag, the Jolly Roger uh, money sign. And then I guess that's a little island. So, yeah, that's his Curse of Oak Island. <laughs> I need to watch that. Okay. That's a good show. That's a good show. You said it's been like what, so because it's not just years? them digging a hole. <laughs> I mean, they get into like a lot of the history and everything. So when they were finding Templar stuff on the island, they went to like a whole history of the Templars and just it's it's really fascinating. So you know, I got and sidelined when we were watching Dark. Is Dark? Was that the name of it? Dark. I love Dark. I, I missed the last. There's fun guy, fun guy. Oh hey, fun guy, fun guy. Yeah, I missed the last season of Dark. 
So I need to catch up. <laughs> yeah, great show. Great show. Yeah. So, all right, everybody, that is it for this evening. Hope to see several of you tomorrow night for uh, Connecting the Universe. Again, go to connecttheuniverseportal.com. It's right there. Um, I had a fantastic time with Johnny tonight. And um, next week on uh, Edge of the Rabbit Hole, Richard Dustup. And we'll be talking about his thousand books that he has now. <laughs> books. He has a lot of them. Yeah, we, 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 I finally met him at Mass Paracon back in September. And we chatted a bit about that, about his process, uh, which is, uh, and there's Bill Prack. Hey, he's also part of the Connect Universe portal and was there at Mass Paracon with, with Richard. So, Ooh. you know, I really want to go to right. Vegas. I don't know. Yeah, everybody keeps keeps saying, oh, I'll, I'll see you in Vegas. And I'm like, I'm not going. I'm not going to be Why there. not? Come on. Let's go. Let's just it's, charter a plane. We'll just all go. Right, right. <laughs> uh, there, there are a couple different reasons why not. But, okay. um, yeah. Okay. Maybe next year. So Always always split the eights, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Until next time. Thank you.